Trials Rising, we're doing tips and tricks. I'd like to mention that this is mostly focused towards people that might be, you know, newer to the game and maybe some advanced tips throughout. Uh, the game is split into a couple of different areas, so there's the main racing area, which has the the global kind of skill you go through. It's easy to tell the kind of difficulties present. Uh, you know, it says easy right beside it, or medium, or hard, or beginner. Uh, there's a trials area, university trials, where you kind of hone your skills. Uh, when you're looking at the map, these sort of skulls or regular areas uh, are basically just your regular level sort of challenges. The stadiums are your large-scale area where you finish off a league and you move on to the next section. Then there's contracts. They show up with, like, people's faces on it. Uh, then you have like these sort of competitor type things you're seeing with these options and contracts which grant you extra bonuses you can see them all present there and it just kind of gives you a really interesting quick HUD indicator of what's going on you know in each of the different things and there's also a filter with LB where you can adjust what you're seeing in the game and the modes and the skills that you're playing cool moving past that uh, if you need more content there's race central which has a ton of multiplayer content that people are creating we're pre launch so there's not really a lot of it and this is a really good place to sort of hone your skills and see some wacky challenging courses that developers wouldn't make but regular people that are monsters would so that's a good thing to know uh, there's a couple different bike types in the game and while you have to unlock some of them you do really spend a lot of time with the squid and the rhino i suggest getting used to both of them and kind of maybe picking a favorite because uh, they both handle different all the bikes handle differently in the game and you just kind of get kind of got to get used to what they do in terms of power how they handle because that's going to be essential when you are actually racing so the customization stuff really doesn't impact gameplay at all it's cosmetic just wanted to note that so we're going to jump into a race here and kind of go over some technical stuff. So we're going to just start off nice and easy with the uh, the Breaking Bad. And we're not going to try to run through it. So the game is about speed. You're trying to get through the level as fast as you can because you want the highest time and you get the better metal. Uh, you may have a contract that kind of requires you to do weird things like flips or something like that. So I mean, if you're working towards that, that's cool. So when you start off, you get a timer, right? So before you hit the first area, if you're kind of like messing up or you're kind of like this uh, it's best just to restart it because you start at zero seconds if you haven't hit that first timer so if there's a like a larger timer going on uh, you'll go right from the start but you see I've hit that first point and now I'm kind of stuck there so your first instinct might be just to hold down RT and go this does actually work quite a bit when you are playing but don't be afraid to slow down and kind of play around with your speeds I mean I crashed there but you get the sense of it that some areas, uh, when you're going along certain platforms that are raising, it's actually a good tactic to kind of slow down and adjust what you're doing. And it might actually be faster for you to get to certain areas if you are kind of slowing down and not making like wildly huge jumps off areas and instead small jumps because when you're doing large air jumps, you're actually taking more time because you got to come down. Right? Remember, it's all about speed and making it through areas fast, right? And also, don't be afraid to kind of let your character play out. Uh, sometimes you might do a flip that you didn't expect and actually land correctly, not to death like that one. And, uh, you know, it could actually save your time. But if everything is kind of hopeless, you're not going to make it to an area. At any point, press B or platform equivalent in order to reset to the last checkpoint. If you feel like there's no hope in what you're trying to achieve, you can just press the back button and you start from the beginning of the race. And try not to accidentally do this. I don't see how you could since the game is so focused on minimal buttons. But I just wanted to mention that in case you need to get a fresh restart. So yeah, it's pretty easy. The movement system, you're generally just racing along using your trigger, your right trigger, and or you know, platform equivalent. And you're just kind of racing along. Then there's the sense of leaning. So you use the left stick to kind of lean your character. So a lot of the time it's just light leans, but if you're going up a heavy hill, you might need to lean up, you know, kill yourself, or you might need to lean back, and you really gotta sort of balance it out and kind of get used to it. Most of the time it's just like a light, sort of let your character, you know, just to make sure that your wheels are both on the ground so that you're not flopping around or doing wheelies and stuff. I mean, obviously this is something that takes time to get used to, and uh, 
yeah, it's just it's about practicing and getting really a good hold on the bike. And of course, the different bikes, like I mentioned, have different uh, sort of functionality to them in terms of their agility or their speed. So it might take you a little bit to get used to that element. And at the end, you usually die in some way. So don't think that's a bad thing. It happens. So you're noticing the X's I got, that's for messing up. Those add five seconds of a penalty to your count. And those can be detrimental to your score when you're trying to get something really good, like a, a gold or something. We'll do, I'm trying to think of like a regular, yeah, this is a good example for this. We're going to do the Rhino just so you can get a different sense of the different bikes that are at play. Kind of cool, right? So you can customize your character uh, by collecting crates. You get tons of crates for leveling. And then there's acorns you can buy, which are microtransactions. And uh, it's just all apparently cosmetic stuff, at least at launch from what I've seen. So you can press Y at any time to kind of launch your character out. I thought that was worth mentioning. And then you're able to reset it. And if you lean forward, you can launch your character forward. You know, back in the day, it's kind of like a way to finish certain levels if your bike was kind of messed up. Sometimes when you're like kind of stretching along, it might be worth it just to push your bike a little bit longer in order to uh, reach a checkpoint. You know, just in case you're not crashing, but you're close to. So these kind of sections are what I was talking about where you might need to actually adjust your speed. There's actually quite a lot of them. And there's a bit of a weird sort of uh, gravity loss flip when you're on top of them up in the air. So yeah, like I was mentioning, there's a little bit of a weird gravity thing. So your character might actually get stuck in up air animation. I think we're going to maybe be able to show that off here. And it's just kind of like a weird... Well, it didn't really happen there. But it's a weird sort of thing where you're locked and you can't really move or remove your bike and you just kind of get... I don't know, sort of lost in that animation that kind of kills your time again. Keep in mind, you know, the, the more that your bike's wheels are on the ground, the faster you're actually going to finish your race. So try to control <laughs> uh, your speed and your jump. Because you can slow down in this game. Don't be afraid to. You don't always have to be gunning it. You know, a lot of this game is about technique, especially when you get to the harder levels. Uh, you know, it's going to take a lot more skill in order to complete them. And don't be afraid to maybe fail on a level. I say that in the sense that you can run through it and not do great, you know, do really bad, fail everything, and just, like, re go back and replay it once you understand the level. Because there's sometimes, you know, you might be having a really good run, and then you'll hit one point, and you'll be like, oh, this, this sucks, I suck at this. Because there might be a hard area in that one level, and it might hit you by surprise, it might be in the middle, it might be at the end, and it'll ruin your run time. But once you get a hold of it, and you've practiced, you can go back and, you know, sort of master that track without having too many problems. So don't be afraid to test things out and really learn the levels and do well at them. I mean, you can play it casually or you can be really hardcore about the game. The choice is completely up to you. And I think that's what's neat about Trials is that it offers that sense of competitive play while at the same time being something that someone can just casually enjoy, which is really cool. You can probably just like watch me like roll through this. I'm trying to do the best while going over technical aspects of this. So this is an example of a layering area, like I was mentioning earlier. So we've got the lower section, which I could fall to, or I might be able to hit that top section, kind of get a little bit of a, a boost through it. And it's really about playing with the levels and finding what works best in order to get you towards the ending. So here I skipped a large portion of it, but there's a lot of air time, which could technically slow down my score, which is not a, what I'm trying to do. Uh, fun, right? Notice how the clock keeps going. So you need to be the one that makes the judgment in terms of kind of getting your speed going and uh, seeing if you're actually hitting the checkpoints. Because if not, you may need to uh, restart the entire race. You know, depending on what trying to like what kind of point you're trying to reach or what kind of score you're trying to obtain. We'll all have our own little standards within this in terms of. You know what we're trying to get. Uh, you want to finish the levels well and get the highest points because then you level faster, you unlock new areas, new stadiums, new challenges. You know, of course, stuff like that. So we're going to do this one because I think there's a contract. Six backflips just to give an idea that they typically recommend a bike type, but don't be afraid to pick a bike that you're comfortable with when you are going into it. I mean, a lot of this is choice. Certain bikes handle certain terrains better in certain levels. You know, or easier with certain bike types. 
and just really be prepared for anything. You're never sure what you're going to expect. Oh yeah, I remember this one. Because it's like a, a backwards type thing. Again, if it's not going well, uh, don't be afraid to basically just restart if you haven't hit that first checkpoint yet, because you know, you're not really getting a penalty on time. If you are competing against somebody directly, though, you are not able to do that restart. So it's mostly just like a certain situation type thing. So this one, this is the challenge. I have to do backflips, which can actually be kind of hard because some of the levels are, you know, sort of smaller. I should probably get a, a bigger jump to do so. But when you are doing skill points, you know, kind of judge it. I find it's best to sort of guess and gauge how much you can actually get accomplished in terms of flips before you hit the ground. Uh, and just kind of before the last one, just let your character level themselves out instead of trying to do another flip or something because that's the safety method. Because you got to remember, you're still trying to get like a good time on this, which I'm obviously not because I'm doing this how many times just to show off this contract, but you get the sense of it. And again, going to the pre be prepared for anything, you see how like the world entirely shifts here. Some of these sections where they sort of do these large drops might actually be really difficult. I, I think I had a hard time on this one initially. And sometimes you just kind of got to let your bike just ride in order to be successful. Sometimes when you're doing the backwards things, you just got to kind of go back a little bit and let your character get set up so that you can go forward uh, really fast in order to jump over. You know, uh, instead of just gunning forward right away, you might actually not have enough speed and you might launch yourself downwards and fail an area which could be you know, a little bit annoying when you are trying to do stuff. So this goal is a little ridiculous. No faults. Backflips, front flips. Crazy. Obviously you get more points for doing different challenges uh, if you are crazy enough. So we'll do one more just so you get an idea of how wild this game can actually get. Yeah, don't be afraid to replay things or watch replays to kind of see where you're failing. And it's just sometimes about repetition and getting a hold on things. You might have a terrible time your first run, and then you're able to, you know, memorize or kind of understand the map better, and then you can go back and you can really conquer that time and uh, be better. You know, stuff like that. And there are different variations to it. It's not all, like, racing, but the core of the game is about speed and doing better. <laughs> that part's funny. So this is a time where it's more about picking your spell. I think I got jumped up there on checkpoint because I was going to do the thing. Sometimes you want to take slow jumps over holes. Not too slow because you don't get enough speed going up a ramp, but not too fast that you're like launched like significantly far into the air because that's going to add to your runtime quite a bit. And a lot of these little more technical type tracks are about using your character's body in order to keep yourself down. Like I said, a good rule of thumb is to keep your wheels both grounded as much as possible unless you're a crazy advanced player that can do all sorts of, you know, one wheel skidding. And again, I, I don't know what type of player you're at, and I hope that this has been helpful in terms of providing at least helpful tips and ways to kind of get used to Trials Rising so that you can have a good time with it and advance well with your motorcycling. And keep in mind that the levels do determine what sort of unlocks and new content you gain access to, so you do want to be increasing your level and finding the best way to do so. I think that about covers what I have for this game, and I hope you did find it helpful.